Thank you so much, Sir Ray, for that wonderful introduction. Isang matsaya at matgandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Ako po muli, si Ginang Janet Manuel, guro mula sa Hulo Integrated School, ang inyong makakasama para sa linggong ito. Ako po ang inyong magiging math buddy para sa advanced lessons ng Grade 6 Mathematics Module 10 or Week 10. Handa na ba kayong matuto mga batang mandunong? Tara, samahan niyo ako at ating tatalakayin ang inyong mga aralin para sa Module 10. Welcome again to Project SOAR. For today's topic, it is an advanced lessons in Mathematics 6, Module 10. The topic is multi-step routine and non-routine problems involving division and any of the other operations of decimals, mixed decimals, and whole numbers, including money, using appropriate problem strategies and tools. So, at the end of this lesson, the learners are expected to solve multi-step routine and non-routine problems involving division and any of the other operations of decimals, mixed decimals, and whole numbers, including money, using appropriate problem strategies and tools. Before that, let us review first the keywords used in math word problems. These keywords are also known as the clue words, wherein kapag nakikita natin itong mga clue na to sa word problem, it gives us a hint kung ano bang operation ang gagamitin natin to solve the problem. Let us start with the clue words in addition. For addition, here are the common clue words. Of course, add, sum, plus, total, together, increased, nadagdag, and combined, in all, all together, and deposit. Saan ba ginagamit ang deposit? Kapag ka tayo ay merong savings account or current account sa banko, pag tayo nagdagdag ng pera doon, ang ating ginagawa ay nagdi-deposit. Pag nagdadagdag tayo ng pera sa ating savings. So, deposit kay kasali din sa addition. Kasi nagdadagdag tayo doon ng pera sa ating savings account. Next, what are the keywords used in subtraction? So, here are some of the keywords used for subtraction. Of course, minus, subtract, difference, change. Saan ba ginagamit ang change? Pag tayo bumili, binigay natin buo ang pera natin, susuklian tayo. So, kaya tayo may change kasi may nabawas dun sa ating pera. Kaya ang change dyan ay clue words din for subtraction. Take away. So, pag may tinanggal ka, ibig sabihin nagbawas ka. Decreased. Nabaw nabawasan. Bumaba. Fewer than. So, umunti. Or ma mas unti. Lost. Ano tong lost na to? Nawala. Actually, ang lost na tinutukoy dito, like for example, kung ang weight mo dati ay 50 kg, if you have lost 12 kilograms, so ibig sabihin, nabawasan. Or nawalan ka ng 12 kilograms, nabawas dun sa 50. Kaya may loss dito. No? Next, withdraw. So, kung may deposit sa addition, sa subtraction, meron namang withdraw. Withdraw, refer din, kung may savings account tayo at binawasan natin yung ating savings dun sa banko, withdraw yon So, may subtraction din doon. 
and then reduced, remain or retain, left, and rest. So, ito yung mga common keywords na ginagamit or nakikita natin for us to give a hint na subtraction ang gagamitin natin sa problem na yun. Next, for multiplication. Sa multiplication, we have times, multiply, by, of, product, groups of. Like for example, 3 groups of 4. So, ibig sabihin, multiply natin 3 at saka yung 4. Tatlong grupo ng tagpo 4. So, 12. Next, area. Bakit kasali dito yung area? Kasi pagka may area, nagta-times tayo karaniman. Especially kung ang kinukuha natin ng area ng square, ng rectangle, ng uh, triangle, at saka iba pang polygons. So, minumultiply natin yung length, width, no? or base, and height. So, kaya ang area dyan, pag may area, common is nagmumultiply tayo. Next, every, each, all together, twice, pwede thrice, double, pwede ring, triple, squared, or cube. Next, for division. For division, here are some of the clue words or keywords. Divide, quotient, grouped into. Like for example, 30 grouped into 6. Ilan? Bawat group. So, group into. Half. Half. Half of 4 is 2. Hinati ang 4. Naging dalawa. No? Half. Ibig sabihin, nag-divide tayo. Next, ratio of fractioned. Pag nagpa-fraction tayo, nag-hati-hati tayo. Percent, equally shared. Like for example, 10 donuts equally shared to 5 siblings. So, ibig sabihin, 10 divided by 5. Combine, ay, column. Bundled in two, or packed in two, or boxed in two, no? mga paggrupo yan. And then, parts, and each. So, these are the common clue words used in word problems. Ano naman mga steps in solving routine problems? So, nasa division na tayo ng decimals. So, probably, lahat kayo familiar na sa mga steps ng routine problems. Kasi, from addition, nagkakaroon na tayo ng topic about problem solving. So, let us recall the steps. So, the first steps is, the first step is, understand the problem. In understanding the problem, you have to know what is Asked. So, kung binasa mo yan, naintindihan mo yan, alam mo dapat kung ano ang tinatanong dyan. No? Alam mo dapat kung anong hinahanap sa problem. And then, know what are given. So, intindihin mo kung ano ba yung mga nandoon na. Next, know or find the clue. No? Makikita mo naman yan kung naintindihan mo yung problem. So, dun sa clue, no, malalaman mo dyan, no, kung ano ang operation na i-apply mo, no, by using the clue. Next, plan for the problem. In planning the problem, you have to know the operation or operations to be used. So, yun nga mga clue ang makakatulong, no, isa lang sila sa mga uh, makakatulong kung paano mo ka magdedetermine or paano mo madedetermine ang operation na gagamitin mo. And then, pag nadetermine mo na anong operation gagamitin mo, write the number sentence by applying the operation you decided to use. 
And the next step is solve the problem. So in solving the problem, you have to show your solution by computing the number sentence. And then check and look back. So you have to review and check your answer. Tama ba ang naging sagot ko? Paano mo malalaman? You can check your answer. Kung sa solution mo, nag-add ka to check your answer, mag-subtract ka naman. Do the inverse operation. Kung sa solution mo, nag-divide ka to check your answer, mag-multiply ka naman. Kung ang makukuha mo ng sagot ay yung given, then tama yung sagot mo. Next, in solving non-routine problems naman involving multi-step routine and non-routine problems involving division and any of the other operations of decimals, mixed decimals, and whole numbers including money, ito lang mga step. Read and analyze the problem carefully. Tell what is asked and what are given. Then use other strategies like act out the problem, Listing or table method, maglista ka or gumawa ka ng table kung saan ka mas komportable na masasagot mo yung problem. Guess and test, illustrating or making diagram, using patterns, and a lot more. Now, let us have an example to solve. Let us solve the problem in your module. Mr. Barayuga, a guidance teacher, bought an electric bike in marketplace in Kalentong. Cost 47,800 pesos for him to be used in going to school. He made a down payment of 15,575 pesos. He paid the rest of the amount in five equal installments. How much did he pay for each installment? Do you think electric bike is useful nowadays? Yes. So common na ngayon dito sa atin, especially dito sa Mandaluyong, na yung mga ginagamit na uh, bike ay mga electric na. No? Kasi mas convenient silang gamitin. Less effort pati. No? Tsaka uh, menos sa gas. How will you solve the problem? Paano mga ba natin susolve ang problem? So dito na papasok yung ating strategy ng gagamitin. So for this problem, we will use a routine step in solving this problem. So, understand, what is asked ba in the problem? Anong tinatanong dyan? Ang tanong dyan, yung question is, how much did he pay for each installment? Ay, kulang ng question mark. Okay, how much did he pay for each installment? So, ibig sabihin, pag how much ang tinatanong, it is uh, referred to amount of money. Kaya, ang magiging as natin is the amount he paid for each installment. Magkano yung, yung amount na binayad niya sa bawat installment. Next, what are given? Ano ba mga given dyan? Of course, we have 47,800 pesos, the cost of the electric bike, and 15,575 pesos for the down payment or down payment he made. And then the five equal installments. So, yun yung mga given sa problem. Now, what is or are the clue? Anong clue ang nakikita nyo dyan sa problem? Yes, we have rest and each. 
each for the five equal installments. Let us now plan for the problem. What is or are the operation operations to be used? Ano nga bang operation gagamitin natin? Through the help of the clue words rest, no? It gives us a hint na tayo ay magsasubtract. And then each five equal installments, ibig sabihin magdi-divide tayo. So, ang ating operation na gagamitin ay subtraction and division. Subtract the down payment from the amount of electric bike then divide the difference by 5 to get the monthly installment. Then, write the number sentence. Anong una nating isusulat or isusolve? So, unahin muna nating isolve yung uh, 47,800 pesos minus 15,575 pesos. Kasi, babawas muna natin yung denown payment niya dun sa amount ng electric bike para makita natin or malaman natin yung balance na kanyang in installment into 5. So, ito yung number sentence natin. 47,800 pesos minus 15,575 pesos divided by 5 equals N. Next step is solve the problem. So, is solve muna natin yung nasa loob ng parenthesis. Kaya dito, subtract 47,800 pesos minus 15,575 pesos. Let us arrange them in column. So, 47,800 pesos minus 15,575 pesos. So, 0 minus 0 equals 0. 0 minus 0 equals 0. Bring down the decimal point. Dapat naka-align sila. Kaya lang, minsan, pag gumagamit tayo ng PowerPoint, medyo nagkakalihis-lihis. So, now, nasa 1's na tayo. 0 minus 5 cannot be. We cannot get 5 from 0. So, we have to rename 8 in the hundreds place para makahiram tayo. So, 8 now will be renamed into 7 hundreds and 10 tens. Yung 0 sa tens naging 10 tens na siya. And then, i -re rename naman natin yung 10 tens into 9 tens para yung ating ones na 0 magiging 10 ones. Now, we can subtract. 10 ones minus 5 ones equals 5. 9 tens minus 7 tens equals 2 tens. And then 7 minus 5 equals 2. 7 minus 5 bullet equals 2. 4 minus 1 equals 3. And then bring down the peso sign or just Right again the peso sign. So our answer is 32,225 pesos. Ano ba yang 32,225 pesos? That is the rest of the amount that was paid into five equal installments. So yun yung hinulugan niya sa five installments. Ano ang next step? Paano malalaman magkano ba yung bawat installment na hinulog ni Mr. Barayuga? So, the next step is divide 32,225 by 5. Kasi itong amount na to ang hinulugan niya into 5 installments para malaman natin magkano ba each hulog. So, 32,000 225 divided by 5. So, itas na natin ang ating peso sign. 3 divided by 5 cannot be. So, idamay na natin yung 2. So, 32 divided by 5 
equals 6. By the way, balikan natin mga steps sa pagdi-divide. So, divide, multiply, subtract, and then bring down. So, ang quotient natin is 6, then multiplied by 5. 6 times 5 equals 30. And then subtract 30 from 32 equals 2. And then bring down 2. Next is divide 22 by 5. 22 divided by 5 equals 4. 4 times 5 equals 20. 22 minus 20 equals 2. Bring down ulit ang 2. 22 ulit divided by 5 equals 4. 4 times 5 equals 20. 22 minus 20 again equals 2. Bring down ulit ang 5. So, 25 divided by 5 equals 5. 5 times 5 equals 20. And then, 25 minus 25 equals 0. So, ang nakuha natin quotient is 6,445 pesos. So, ang answer natin, Mr. Barayuga paid 6,445 pesos for each installment. Let us check now the answer. Multiply 6,445 pesos by 5. So, pag multiply natin yan, makukuha natin ay 32,225. Kasi kanina, dinivide natin 32,225 by 5. So, to check, balik na rin natin. Kaya, multiply natin na 6,445 by 5. And then, kung kanina, nag-subtract tayo ng down payment, ngayon, ipa-plus naman natin dito yung down payment. No? So, 32,225 plus 15,575. Ano ba to? Inad natin yung amount ng installment sa down payment. Kaya ang sagot ay 47,800 pesos. Itong 47,800 47,800 pesos na to ay ang amount ng electric bike. So, ganun lang pag-check. Next problem, let us have another example. A bathroom is 2.4 meters long and 1.8 meters wide. Or, a bathroom is 2 and 4 tenths meters long and 1 and 8 tenths meters wide. How many square tiles to the decimeter on each side? are to be used to cover it. Let us analyze the problem. How long is the bathroom? So, the bathroom is 2 and 4 tenths meters long. How about the width? How wide is the bathroom? The bathroom is 8 and 8 tenths meters. Ha, what is the length of each side of the tile to be used to cover it? Ano daw ba yung haba or sukat ng side ng square tiles on each side? So that is 2 decimeters on each side. Ano napansin ninyo sa mga unit of measure? What have you observed about the units used in the given measurement? Yes, hindi sila magkakapareho ng unit of measure. They don't have the same units of measure. Yung sukat ng bathroom ay in meters. And then yung tiles ay in decimeters. So, anong gagawin natin? Since they don't have the same units of measure, we have to convert to make their measure or their units of measure the same. We will use this conversion. 1 meter is equal to 10 
decimeter. If 1 meter is equal to 10 decimeter, 2 and 4 tenths meter now is equal to 24 decimeter. Ano nangyari? We multiplied 2.4 by 10. Kaya naging 24 decimeter. And 1.8 or 1 and 8 tenths meter is equal now to 18 decimeter. So same procedure. We multiplied 1 and 8 tenths by 10. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng 18 decimeter. Now, lahat sila ay nasa decimeter na. We can now illustrate the problem. So, here is the bathroom. It has 2 and 4 tenth meter or 24 decimeter long and 1 and 8 tenth meter or 18 decimeter wide. Ito naman ang tile na ilalagay. It has a dimension of 2 decimeter on its side. So, ilan kayang 2 decimeter side na tile ang magkakasya sa kanyang width. So, bilangin natin. So, the first tile, ayan. No? Kung meron siyang 2 decimeter dito, at 2 decimeter din yung kanyang hapa. So, 18 decimeter yan. So, each tile may lapad na 2 decimeter. Ilan kayang tile ang magkakasya sa width ng bathroom. So, bilangin natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, 9 na tag to 2 decimeter ang kasya sa 18 decimeter wide. Ilan naman ang 2 decimeter side na tile ang magkakasya sa 24 decimeter na uh, length ng bathroom. So, meron na tayong 1 na 2 decimeter para sa kanyang length and then another 2 decimeter no? or another 9 tiles no? another 9 tiles so 18 na and then plus 9 tiles 27 plus 9 tiles 36 plus 9 tiles 100 ay uh, nawala na ako uh, 36 plus 9 is 45 plus 9 is 54 plus 9 tiles 63 plus 9 tiles 72 and then another 9 81 and then 9 again 90 then 9 again 99 and then 108 square 2 decimeter tiles ang kasya sa buong bathroom. So, dun sa length niya, meron tayong 12 na nagkasyang tiles. No? So, dito sa width, we have 18 decimeter dinivide bali yan sa 2 decimeter tiles. Ay, 2 decimeter o, oh, 2 decimeter side ng tiles is equal to 9 tiles. And then, sa kanyang length naman, kung 24 decimeter yon dinivide sa 2, ang nagkasya doon ay 12 tiles. No? So, 12 times 9 equals 108. Kaya, 108 tiles dyan ang nagkasya or nagamit to cover the bathroom. So, answer natin, there are 108 2 decimeter sided square tiles to be used. Let us answer it again by computation. So, hanapin muna natin yung mga given. Mga given dyan is, 
the length of the bathroom is 2.4 meter or 2 and 4 tenth meter which is also equal to 24 decimeter and then yung kanyang width is 1 and 8 tenth meter or 18 decimeter and then yung side ng mga square tile ay 2 decimeter so yun yung mga given natin Anong strategy ang gagawin natin? Find the area of the bathroom in a square decimeter. Then divide it into the area of square tile. So, solution. So, we divided, uh, we multiply first the meter uh, uh, length of the bathroom to the width of the bathroom 24 decimeter times 18 decimeter we will get here 432 square decimeter ito yung area ng bathroom sabi dun sa strategy find the area of the bathroom of the square in square decimeters so nakuha na natin then divide down into the area of square tile Kunin muna natin yung area ng square tile. So, ang tile natin is 2 decimeter by 2 decimeter sa side. 2 times 2 equals 4 square decimeter. Ito yung area ng square tile. So, 432 square decimeter divided by 4 square decimeter that is also equals to 108 tiles so yan ang another way of finding the answer in this problem so that's all i hope you have learned something from my discussion to your module 10 lessons i hope you have enjoyed this afternoon's discussion hanggang dito na lang maraming salamat sa pakikinig hanggang sa muli God bless and bye bye paalam sa lahat